is Showdown going to be the one to kill ABA? No. No. It's pretty good, though. And I'm going to miss I'll make. Trust me, it's the only funny thing I have going on for me. But I can't have people thinking that a game can just give up and die that easy. And I think a lot of people did want to see an ABA killer. Kind of myself, too. But that's not how a game dying works. Uh, let me enlighten you here. ABA. And not just ABA, any game out there is not going to die because of another game releasing. Yeah, the player counts are going to look low. I've seen times where it looks deserted, but that's because all the players are flocking over to the shiny new game first. But overall, that's not killing a game because the players can always just come back. It's more when the developers kill their own game to the point where it's not the same experience they designed it to be. If a game has a hundred thousand active players versus a thousand active players, in reality that's not going to change a thing. You're still going to play the game the exact same way. Unless you're unable to queue into matches or the servers are a burn victim, then it's literally dead. There's no denying it. A game dies mainly from its own developers and how they handle competition. Because Battlefield 2042 now has 10 k players compared to the 100k it had on launch, you still can't tell the difference when you actually play the game. It just has less people to match you with and that doesn't really matter. Titanfall 2 is unplayable normally because its player count is so low that you cannot queue into a match without using a modded client. And it pains me, deep down, my heart still aches. I went through the 7 stages of grief. I paid $5 just to never get into a match. For hours I was waiting and I could not get into a match. ABA isn't dying, it can always get players back if they wanted to. But my issues were with how the game aged over time, that the game lost its passion. I made a whole video where the joke was it's aging like milk, the game's going stale. And having a new Battlegrounds game with a competent dev team, it's a breath of fresh air. The past releases that have been coming out were such a flop that it's refreshing to finally get something new and exciting. Well, I need to make it clear, I'm not looking for an ABA replacement, and neither should you. As we all know, once updates roll around, we're coming right back to the hand that feeds us, even after spitting at its face and calling it trash. To me though, it's exciting that the devs have some potential with the game, and there's still a lot they have in mind. Because I've seen my fair share of overpromising hype teams that run it all to sh**. But Showdown is a special case. I have a bit more faith in it. A lot of good hopes for the game. I've seen it in development for quite a while. And there's also a lot to unpack when the game actually drops. Uh, the first thing is the game's going to be paid access. Now, it's going to cost $2. So it's, it's a big risk to some people because you're missing out on half a water bottle. I think it's a good idea going paid access because now there's going to be two waves of people coming in. The first wave on release and the second when the game goes free, whenever. And this is a good thing, instead of having everyone just come in at once and depend on the updates to keep the player base alive, now there's a little beta phase to get through. They're going to see the ugly sh**, that's fine, but the second wave will see the more released phase and even better, Showdown wants to like reward you for being a first wave player so they're gonna give you like a bunch of these codes which i think is really nice that they do that because you're supporting the game before it goes free there's a lot of games out there that don't do that like this stain gpo i'm gonna f the door what the f are they thinking game on release has a little ugly beta phase on launch even if they have a beta before release there's gonna be problems with the game when it's officially out to tons of people so if you still don't believe me, you can shut up as soon as I mention Overwatch 2. Generally, Showdown is not ready for a public release. It's just not done yet. There's a lot of missing content. You can't have like an anime fighting game without the mainstream characters. That's just my opinion. Uh, but enough with like the talking. I've been talking a lot. I'm actually going to get into the game now. I'm going to spoil it. I'm going to whip it right onto the table. It is really fun. This game does not hold back. It puts a beautifully crafted orgy right in front of your face and it's amazing. There was no reason to add a loading screen. But they still added a loading screen. It made it look better than all of ABA. I just loved everything that was being put in front of my face. It was just an awesome time to look at everything. All the visuals, nothing disappointed me. And yeah, I get not everyone's gonna like it. It's not gonna tickle everyone's butthole the same way because it has like a cartoony cute style to it. But you can at least appreciate the effort the devs put into making the game feel alive. There's all these subtle details, like the character portraits being interactable. I was messing around with my keys and I accidentally opened up the emo menu. Only to get a surprise job by the gorgeous mini animation. I was too stunned to play the game. I think for like two whole minutes I was just watching the boxes fade in and out. 
And I'm gonna keep saying this over and over again, nothing felt out of place to me in this game, everything had its place and time, and even the characters like Ippo, who I thought all he does was punch. If you couldn't tell, I'm pretty f***ing wrong, and I'm glad I'm saying that. This isn't an issue the game really suffers with, I feel like most characters are a blast to use. They have enough impact and they need to, like, they really let you know this is the big move. The only one I can't really vouch for is Rimuru, because I don't have him. But the point I'm trying to make here is that no matter who you play, you'll still have a lot of fun with them. Most characters have their moments and subtlety when they need to, like, nothing feels too much. Except for one, and I'll get to that. Though I want to emphasize, I am seeing a common theme with the game. I know I've been saying it over and over again, but nothing felt out of place to me. Everything the devs added had some intent behind it. Even after a month or so of playing this game, I still strongly stand by this. Something I missed completely were how the characters work in this game. If you've played fighting games, and I'm not talking about ABA, I'm talking about an actual fighting game, you should be pretty familiar with character archetypes and subclasses. A really good example that this game does is Jotaro. Jotaro is like a grappler. He's very close range and he has moves that grab your opponent that if they don't respect your range, he is going to rightfully fist them. And there's other characters like Joker, not the better Joker. He's definitely a zoner and keeps you away from him with all these long range moves. There's a lot of others I want to mention, but the point is, it's a good thing. Especially compared to basing the moveset from the anime. I don't like pointing fingers at anybody, but I do want to point a couple fingers at ABA. I don't see many characters with like an archetype behind them. And yeah, if you want to consider maybe like one or two, if old Joseph is a grappler to you, fine. But I'd say most characters are based off the anime and getting moves from there. That's not inherently a bad thing. I full well enjoy the game, but there is a reason why DB Fighters and Smash use character archetypes. Does it all matter? No, not really. It's all personal preference. What matters to me is when a game isn't consistent with these archetypes. And this is what scares me when it comes to Showdown. Because I cannot put a f***ing finger on what Katakuri is. At first I thought Katakuri was an all-rounder because he has short range and long range moves. But all-rounders are supposed to be the best at nothing. Katakuri hands down has better moves than some characters that specialize in close range or long range. It's not a big surprise why a lot of people think Katakuri is too strong. Because he just outclasses a lot of the other characters. Here, you want to dumb a better fix? Replace Mochi Cascade with like a transport ability. Mochi Cascade is too f***ing good in this game. I love Katakuri. I think he's the coolest, the best character they've put out. But he's too strong. He wins a lot of situations not because of damage numbers or cooldowns, but just because of how his kit is based, he has no downsides to using it. Maybe it'll pass over and I'll just realize I'm flat out wrong. But I just can't convince myself that Katakuri is fair compared to other characters right now. Only time is gonna tell us how the characters were meant to be. Still, with the characters we have now, you're gonna have a good time, no, great time with playing these characters. But characters don't really even matter all that much, because to me combat is even more important. And I have to make a note of this somewhere. I was really bad at this game starting out. Like, horrendous. At first I thought this game was just very, very poorly made with like a bunch of clutter. But no, I just sucked. Like I was really that bad. And this is coming from the ABA sweat. Yeah, not to brag, but I beat Homer and Nasu. And it still took me a couple of days for the combat to finally click in for me. And unfortunately, I do think this is a type of game where you're gonna need a type of guide to actually help you. Now, if enough people want to see a guide, I'll make one. But I'll link below some of the ones I've used that really did help me learning the game. But once that combat really clicks in for you, who is it satisfying? There's no real good way to describe it. So back to the pointy fingers thing. Okay, but what am I gonna compare it to? Like every Roblox fighting game has ABA combat at this point. So sorry. I'm not sorry at all though. So Showdown takes a lot of ABA's fundamentals. You have your up tilts, up flings, and down slams. But it takes another variation to them. Like for example, you can out combo extend with your up flings if you manage to actually land it. And it's not too easy to land, like you're not going to land it all the time. You can also do a M2 down slam or a heavy down slam that now will actually do more stun. But you can perfect block it. And yeah, you can also perfect block in this game. 
There's also evasives and some moves that can knock combos then and knock your opponent away. So there's a lot of stuff in this game when it comes to this combat. Which is why I would give the complaint of it being a little bit too advanced. I don't think it's a bad thing. Uh, not at all. I think it's awesome. Because now you kind of don't run into the situation where you're just ultimately screwed and put into combos after combos. Uh, yeah, there's a certain game I'm looking at here. There's usually a failsafe and a way to get out of everything if you're just good enough. Which is what I really want to say if perfect blocking wasn't atrocious to use. I think I've actually been more punished for using a perfect block than me actually even landing one. So, I don't even know how this works. But, I have more clips of me just landing PBs and being punished for it, like losing lives and even losing games because of a PB, than me like actually capitalizing on one, and it's so dumb. What? Uh, I'm pretty sure PBs are supposed to stun for a little bit longer than you could just PB and they block right after and run away. It's so annoying. I, I just I can't be the only one who thinks this. Maybe, maybe I'm being stupid because I do think the PBs in this game are pretty easy to land. Uh, they're like a lot easier than most games, I'd say, but the parry window, the reward you get is so small, especially for the risk you take because I mean, you're PBing most of the time with lock breaks, so if you fail, you're, you're getting block broken, but you're put into a combo. I, I don't think I'm the only one who thinks PBs are just bad in this game. I just hope they fix it, and if I can get a good reason for why they're like this, then I'll shut the hell up. Aside from that, I've thoroughly enjoyed the combat. I think it's my favorite to this day, because I can keep coming back to it over and over. It's just really satisfying to me. The only thing holding the game down, well the combat at least, is the skill floor. is a little too high. It's My stupid P brain took a little bit longer than I'd like it to, to actually understand the combat. I'm glad I did though, because once you understand it, it's not that bad. Uh, speaking of me being stupid, I want to talk about an experience I had with the codes. So I thought the codes, as with many other games, the code is gonna be in like a menu, in, in a GUI, where you open it up and you put in the code. It's gonna have like the Twitter, the Discord, wherever you can find them, and that's where you do the codes, right? No. It's not even there. So what next? P Brain Me goes into the lobby because I see a bunch of characters that if you talk to them, they do stuff for you. So I thought that they must have the code thing. No. No, that's the thing, they didn't have it. So I'm doing with my thumb up my ass, not knowing what to do until I looked at the Discord, and there I found it had to actually redeem a code. Couldn't it have been a little bit easier to like put it in the description or literally anywhere? Also, okay, now this isn't stupid. Why are the codes so short? They expire in a day. I don't have the time to play the game every single day, sorry. God, I, I touch grass like occasionally. It would be nice if the codes that you said I get like a $30 value from actually lasted a bit. And since we're on the topic of it, let's talk about the biggest TV that this game is in right now. The one I'm more scared of and what you should be as well, especially if you're a developer of the game. Somehow there's a content issue or a content drought already with the game. Uh, that's not a good sign. This game just came out, like just. It has been like a month. You're telling me, like one, two, three, I, I'm not counting, like six or seven brand new characters, a whole bunch of new maps, two new game modes, and all of that is already born? Yeah, and they're right. It hurts for me to say it, but this game is pretty dry. It's already March and it's been like two months now. I, would, I don't know why I'm taking so long to make a video off track there, but there is not much to do in the game now. I'm just getting skins and... That's really it. I have all the characters I want, and look, when I'm playing the game, when you really strip this game down from its visuals, it's just like the same as every other anime fighting game here. You have your pubs, which you fight a bunch of people, and your rank, which is you, like, you fight one, one or two one. people. Throw another one, I'm down That's it, it's just fighting. I don't think adding two new characters a month or so is gonna do anything for the game. Like, I might be wrong, and I hope I, I am, but I just don't see it that way. I think everyone's just getting tired of this pub and then ranked and that's it that's all you do they did it in AUR Heaven's Arena ABA but like ABA at least has a little bit more to it it has I guess prestige 
of which I'm going to give credit to this game. I know down the line they'll be adding a rebirth system where you get a multiplier for your coins and gems. But what's even cooler is if you add characters that are only available if you rebirth. It's a lot like prestige and sure, whatever. But the point I'm trying to make is anything that is more than just fighting. Like, look at all these other fighting games, like Street Fighter, and I can't name it off the top of my head, uh, Jump Force, that kind of a game. Uh, those have extra things aside from just fighting. They're not the main spotlight, they're not the star of the show, but look, like, they keep the players playing. Now, I don't think my suggestions are anywhere near good. I think they're on the same level as Twitter Blue, where you have to pay to subscribe to Twitch. Twitch? How did I get Twitch? Oh my god. Uh, but a real suggestion, not like a uh, stupid one I've been saying, is listen to what your community wants. You have a suggestion board, then use it. That's just the best way you can go about it. You can ask what your community wants and they'll react to it. Like You'll see if they like the stuff you're going to put out. If you can't think of anything, then ask what they can think of. They might have ideas you weren't even thinking of. I think Showdown has done a great job of listening to the community and what they want, but you're just going to run into the same issue if you keep adding these new characters. The game's going to get dry again. Don't let that discourage you though, you're still going to have a blast playing the game. Look, if you haven't bought this game already, just go buy it. It's it's two dollars. If you're that poor, I'll go PayPal you two dollars, okay, you poor f So yeah, I got all the complaints out the way. I would really love to keep praising and praising this game because it's just so rare to see like a well put game. The most recent one I've played was Deep Woken, before the Synapse Souls became too OP. Bottom of the line, this game is great. Showdown is definitely worth your time, and if you have the money, just buy it. It's not that much. Support the developers, they put a lot of work into the game, just why not? And if you skipped here, good. You just saved yourself 15 minutes to me rambling the same over and over again. I really don't like comparing a game to anything that's just not fair. But I have beef with ABA. I'm going to spit on it as much as I want. And that's all I have to say, except I want to leave a little special message for the developers. Uh, the lovely bunch of those who made the game. So if you could do me a favor and send this video out to them so they could hear it, you know, it would really help me out. And I, I, you know, like, subscribe, that stuff. Thanks for watching. Uh, you'll never see me again, anyways, doesn't matter. So anyways, now that the developers are here, you can click off if you're not a developer, by the way. This is going to be more like tech-savvy stuff, trust me, this is more cryptic. <laughs> trust me, alright. Alright, it's just you lovely bunch, and I want to give you a kiss on the cheek personally, but I can't, fortunately, so... Joker for Persona Pi. Just please hear me out. Just think about it. It'd be so fucking cool if you the only team that could pull it off. Think about it. Like, in the honor attack. It's so amazing. When I read the original roster and I saw Joker on the list, my eyes lit up like the 4th of fucking July. Until I realized, wait, that's not Joker. That's Joker. And, and, and please, I'm so desperate. My entire life is Persona. Look at the background music. All the, it's Persona. Even with Sword Notes is Persona. I'm begging you. Anything at the very least, I'll pay you. If you don't add him, okay? But at least he made the Joker skin. The better Joker skin for Joker. Alright, that's all. See you.